Let us pray. Attend to the pleas of your people with heavenly care, O Lord, we pray, that they may see what must be done and gain strength to do what they have seen. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. After Nathan had spoken to King David, the king went in and sat before the Lord and said, Who am I, Lord God, and who are the members of my house that you have brought me to this point? Yet even this you see as too little, Lord God. You have also spoken of the house of your servant for a long time to come. This too you have shown to man, Lord God. You have established for yourself your people Israel as yours forever, and you, Lord, have become their God. And now, Lord God, confirm for all time the prophecy you have made concerning your servant and his house, and do as you have promised. Your name will be forever great when men say, The Lord of hosts is the God of Israel, and the house of your servant David stands firm before you. It is you, Lord of hosts, God of Israel, who said in a revelation to your servant, I will build a house for you. Therefore, your servant now finds the courage to make this prayer to you. And now, Lord God, you are God, and your words are truth. You have made this generous pro promise to your servant. Do then bless the house of your covenant, that it may be forever before you, for you, Lord God, have promised, and by your blessing, the house of your servant will be blessed forever. The word of the Lord. The Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father. Lord, remember David and all his anxious care how he swore an oath to the Lord, bowed to the mighty one of Jacob. The Lord God will give him the throne of his David, his father. I will not enter the house where I live, nor lie on the couch where I sleep. I will give my eyes no sleep, my eyelids no rest, till I find a home for the Lord, a dwelling for the mighty one of Jacob. The Lord, God will give the, throne of his the Lord swore an oath to David, a firm promise from which he will not withdraw. Your own offspring I will set upon your throne. The Lord God will give me the throne of David his father. If your sons keep my covenant and the decrees which I will teach them, their sons too forever shall sit upon your throne. The Lord God will give me the throne of David his father. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He prefers her for his dwelling. Zion is my resting place forever. In her I will dwell, for I prefer her. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, Is a lamp brought in to be placed under a bushel basket or under a bed, and not to be placed on a lampstand? For there is nothing hidden except to be made visible. 
Nothing is secret except to come to light. Anyone who has ears to hear ought to hear. He also told them, Take care what you hear. The measure with which you measure will be measured out to you, and will still more will be given to you. To the one who has, more will be given. From the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. The Gospel of the Lord. Light, ordinary, everyday light. We take it for granted. It's always around us. We can't escape it. We've made it so convenient. All you have to do is flip a switch and there's light. Even at night, unless you go to the most remotest places in this country or world, there's still light, whether that be the moon, the stars, and even on a cloudy night, uh, our artificial light is reflected back down to the ground. Light is everywhere. Do you ever think about what light really is? Now, it's been 30-some years since I've been in high school in physics class. I don't know how much has changed since then. I'm sure a lot. But I remember our physics teacher teaching us about light and saying it's it's still a very great mystery to science. They still don't fully understand what it is. It behaves even differently. It's a wave, but it also acts like a particle. And that's confounding to the scientific mind. It can't be doing both things at the same time, and yet it is light. We hear that word light a lot in our liturgy as well, in our scriptures. In one sense, it's not the same light that we take for granted, but we use it as an image to help us to understand God as well. Every Sunday in the Creed, we we speak of Jesus as light from light, true God from true God. Jesus is the light of the world. And today, Jesus in the gospel uses the image of light through a lamp and tells us that you don't light a lamp and hide it underneath a bushel basket or lock it away in a closet for light to do what it must do. It must shine. It must be brought out. It must be revealed. We need light. We all know what, how hard it is when light is not around. We stumble and fall and hurt ourselves. And the saying can be true of light from light, true God from true God, Jesus who is the true light. We need him and we need to allow him to reflect brightly in our own lives as well. Jesus is the true light of this world, but now he entrusts that same light to us. When we're baptized in the baptismal rite, just towards the end of it, after the most important part, the pouring of the water, the anointing of the chrism oil, the indication of the white garment, the last thing we do is we give a candle lit from the paschal candle. And we tell the parents and godparents to keep that light burning brightly. It's been entrusted to them. We're speaking figuratively, of course. We're not saying keep that candle lit all the time, but what we're saying is now that that child has now been enlightened. The light of Christ has been ignited within their soul. And parents and godparents have that awesome responsibility to make sure that that light of Christ is not only kept burning brightly, but allowed to grow. 
Jesus says elsewhere in Scripture, he says, I've come to light the world on fire. And how I wish it was already emblazing, enkindled, the light. We are partakers of that light. And as his disciples, we are to spread that light. And that's something we need to reflect on every day in our ordinary task. Whether we are priests or homemaker or storekeeper, teacher, whatever it is we do in the ordinary things of life, we must never forget that we have been entrusted with the light, the light of Jesus. He is mystery, but he is our Lord and Savior. Our faith teaches us that God hears our prayers. Let us place our petitions before him now. For missionaries of the church throughout the world, may they work boldly and tirelessly to spread the faith. Let us pray. For government officials, may they promote an atmosphere that allows people to practice their faith freely. Let us pray. For those who are searching for meaning and hope in their lives, may they find their way to the light of God's truth. Let us pray. For our parish faith community, may all her members carry out their responsibility to spread the light of faith and evangelize. Let us pray. We pray for the intention of this Mass this morning. First of all, for Alex Van Lanen on his second birthday, and also remember the faithful departed, and in that Mass intention as well, we remember the repose of the soul of Joe Lane, and also the deceased priest of the Diocese of Green Bay who died on this day, one did, Father Edward Schimberg, way back in 1926. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving Creator, we look to you to provide for our needs. May we cherish the faith you have blessed us with and be passionate about sharing it with others. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.